Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have Doug Bagnoli back and he's got the camera on me as you can see. Uh, today we want to talk a little bit about a friend of ours who passed away who was a Mr. America and he passed away at the age of 80 and it was a good friend by the name of Jim Morris. Now many of you know him and there's probably many of you younger guys who don't but this guy had a phenomenal body for years. Yeah, for his entire life, even up until the end. Up until the end, up until his 80s, he was still ripped and doing uh, photo shoots. Uh, we both, Which, by the way, I wouldn't be doing at 80. I'm sorry. <laughs> I might for the senior home, but I'm not quite sure. But he, well, more power to him. He was doing great. Both Doug and I had known him for probably 40 years. So we want to tell our little story about him and just share that with you because he deserves a tribute. He was a really nice guy. would do anything for you. And I'm just sad that he had passed away. When we heard this news, it was like, oh boy, here's another one. Just like Lee right. Colbert and right. a few others. So let's start back. And when was the first year that you met him? Uh, 1976. Oh, so I knew him before you did. I thought you might have. Yeah, he was he was a Bill Pearl um, right. protege. And so he was working out at Bill Pearl's Pasadena, which is where I was. And yeah. we became friends. And we worked out together very often. I mean, not it's not officially training partners. But frequently enough where you might have thought we were. Well, it's one of those things where you walk into the gym and he's there and you say, hey, you want to train today? Where you training? Oh, yeah. I'm doing chest. Okay, I'll do chest. But that's how that works. Which, by the way, I mean, I was 16 years old. I mean, yeah. so what an honor yeah. to have a 1973 Mr. America. Yeah. You know, this was just three years earlier. Right. He just won Mr. America three years earlier and he, you know, wants to do some sets with me. God, what an opportunity. He had great knowledge on how to train the body. Yeah. Um, his sets and his reps and his form was just perfect. His diet was perfect. Yeah. Uh, I met him in... Um, 1969, I was living in Torrance, and I went to Bill Pearls in Inglewood. I was training there. Somehow, we hooked up at one of those gyms and worked out together, and then we decided to go out and have dinner one night and talk about training. And there was a smorgasbord by my house, all you could eat, Swedish smorgasbord. Bodybuilders love those. Yeah, but the thing was, I asked them, I said, look, we got uh, fish, we got short ribs, we got custard, little custard squares that I love. I said, we can eat like this, but we can't do it every day. And those people over there eat like that every day, and they still don't look fat. How come we can do this, and we'll be fat in the next day? He says, nah, you're not really fat. You just hold water for two days, but you don't want to do it every day. It's just a once in a while thing. So we had talked about, um, he had just moved out here. He was looking for a job and I was working for Kellogg selling cereal. Uh -huh. So I said, I can probably get you on. I think the Carnation has an opening. Yeah. So I sent him over there and he got the job and he gave him a company car. Well, he had that job. He kept that job for 25 years wow. and he kept the company car when he quit, believe it or not. Did they let him like do it? He, he bought it from him for like a hundred Oh, bucks. okay. Took it to Earl Scheib and had it repainted. All right. And drove it for another, I don't know how many years. You know, that's funny because I think that's the car that he drove to and from. A four-door four four sedan. A four-door sedan. Yeah, that's the car. And I, and I wondered, how did you pick this car? Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the end of the other side of the story. Yeah. I mean, he liked the car so well that he kept it. I quit the job after a year and a half because I wasn't structured to work eight to five for a company and, you know, go in the supermarkets and do all that shit. So uh, he kept it. He liked it. And he kept the job. Well, over that time, our paths would cross quite a bit. We worked out together. We'd go down to the beach and hang out. And um, we did a, uh, I think one of the first things we got called out on was a heavy Chevy commercial, which the picture will go up. Mm. He and I and Arnold and a bunch of guys on the beach lifting a Chevy into the air called Heavy Chevy. And we're supposed to be really strong, although yeah. we can't. So how did they really lift the car? With a cable, of course. <laughs> There Come was, on, you could have lied to us. There was a skinny you little guy. We really did it. Yeah, right. There was a skinny little guy named Arnold Stang. I think he was a little skinny guy. And remember Arnold named Arnold Strong. Right. They did. A, they did uh, something in um, Hercules in New York. Right. Well, Arnold was the the star of the show. We were Arnold, not Arnold Schwarzenegger, but Arnold right. Strong, uh, Stang. And so we were just around doing that. We got like a thousand bucks for the day, and Jim did, and so we all joined the guild. But that was one of the one of the first things we ever did together. And then, you know, after that, things evolved from Well, there. tell me about it. I saw a picture of you with Jim Morris and Mae West. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to that because this evolves from something else. And that was the first time I saw a picture of you. Was it? Yeah, oh, <laughs> so okay. here we are now. <laughs> okay, um, so we, we, we did the Heavy Chevy. I have a note here because I entered a contest in uh, Fresno. It was a Mr. Central California or one of those things, and I took second next to Art Peacock. Oh, yeah. And Jim went with me. So while we were there, my mom lived in Bakersfield. We stayed yeah. there. We drove up to the Kern River, which, you know, people do rafting down there all the yeah. time. Back then, they did rafting without guides, and then there's like a dead bodies all down that river. Oh, somewhere. yeah, I would imagine. So we stood out on the rocks, and he took this picture of me and a few others that uh, we posed against the rocks, and it was just a great backdrop for photos. Yeah. That was my first, uh, my first introduction to bodybuilding photos. It, you know, you never know how you look until you see it on, on the camera. Right, right. So time went on, and then we, um, we did, I think this came across first. We did the share show. Oh, okay. He and I, Bill Grant. I saw and, those pictures yeah, too, yeah. We had a lot of fun on that show. That video is still up on YouTube, by the way. 
um, where she sings around us and dances and all this, and we're working out and wearing the Stars and Stripes trunks, which I still have. <laughs> and so that came about, and then uh, we got asked to do the Mae West show, uh, mm. the movie called Sextet. Okay. Now, for all of you who don't know who Mae West was, she was a very famous actress back in the 30s and 40s with W.C. Fields, and she did a Las Vegas act. And she always had bodybuilders around her. Zabel was one of them. Joe Gold was one of them. All these guys. Dave Dupree? No. He was Dave Dupree in there? No, Dave but, Dupree was in the one we did. But Dave Johns was in there? No. No? Okay. No, I'm going way back. Way back to oh, the okay. beginning was all the old-time bodybuilders from the 40s and 50s yeah. that were from Gold's. And then when Those she, guys? Uh, no, that's that's us from the 70s. Oh, okay. So when she did the current movie, all of us went down. Cal Scalic and Franco and Jim Morris. And there's a cover of Muscle Mag that I put up that we're all in the show. And we had a month on the show. And we made good money. It was ah. done a Paramount. The reason we had a month, we weren't supposed to, we were supposed to have a week. She was 85, and she couldn't make it to the set every day. Oh, so we go down and wait around. She's not coming today, but they paid us anyway. And she was known as sexy even at 85. She would she would have lines. We'd be working out in the gym, and she'd walk in, and she'd say, Ooh, all this meat and no potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. But Jim and I worked on that, and um, other things came up here and there. Where we, we got shots on but those are the main things i have photos of right now um the heavy chevy the share show the may west and then the current river photos so yeah. over the years like you i mean you know, we run into each other now and then did you yeah. how long did you spend working out with him? how many years um i would say off and on for two years um and then uh and then i went one way he went another way and but i, I do remember that one of his gigs uh before i met him but he talked about it frequently was that he was elton john's bodyguard that's right and he told us a story one time he said that he was uh, in some kind of procession and Elton was in the car and some guy was following him and he wasn't supposed to be following him. And he got out of the car and he put his fist through the window yeah. and pulled the guy out of the car and told him to get out. And he, he, of course, that, that wouldn't intimidate anybody. But um, he was really proud of those Elton John days. Well, the thing with Jim... That was probably the whole rock and roll thing. Yeah, yeah, but the thing with Jim, he's not a violent guy. He's very calm. Yeah, Extremely so that must have really, calm. really upset him. And I always knew him around maybe 220 or so, right? 220? Yeah. He came over to my house one day, and he was up at 245. I don't remember that. No. He had a T-shirt on, and he looked like God. He was so huge, it was ridiculously yeah. huge. I don't know how he gained all that weight, but he just laughed when I asked him. Yeah. But um, he was a very mild-mannered guy, great guy, very quiet, introverted. Yeah, right. And always smiling and all that. But behind that smile, there was a lot of sadness. I always sensed that he was not happy. Yeah. Um, I think what happens a lot of times, and I wanted to mention this, was... You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of young bodybuilders, 18, 19 years old, and they want to be pro bodybuilders. Yeah. And they think that that's just going to be the most wonderful life. Well, yeah. you know, Jim wasn't a pro bodybuilder per se, but many people would aspire to winning Mr. America and think that winning Mr. America will just set you free. Yeah. And it doesn't. You know, it's just one of the things that you can add to your resume. But, you know, you got to keep going. You got you to keep doing other things. And I think he always sensed that he should have gotten more business out of it or more well, something well he kind of kinda did he kind of he came to me when i was living at the beach and he said i need to, i need your help with something i said what's that he says i need to borrow some money i said okay how much he said like twenty five hundred dollars i said what for he said i need to put it in the bank to show the bank i can take a loan out to open up jim morris's gym in west hollywood mm -hmm. so i gave him the money i trusted him and in two weeks he paid me back mm -hmm. and the gym started out as you know and that gym became very very popular right, right. jim's gym jim morris's gym yeah and his logos and his sweatshirts and all that he, he did very well there he had a Full house clientele, made some money. I don't remember how many years he kept it, but I know it did well. He became a personal trainer there. Well, well, my understanding, and this is third-hand information, but um, he had a partner. He had a partner. And the partner did something and pulled it away from him. That's right. Which was sort of an ironic thing because it was called Jim Morris Jim. Yeah. And it continued being Jim Morris Jim, even though he was no longer the owner. Didn't the partner die? I don't... Well, if he did, it, it, I mean, the, the partner took it away from Jim Morris, yeah. as, as I understood the story. Yeah. Um, and that was a big heartache for him, because yeah. I think if there's one thing everybody thinks that would be a wonderful thing to do after you win some prestigious title, yeah. is to open up your own gym. Of course. To have that happen and then have it be taken away from you. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was going to be his bread and butter forever. But then, like you said, he lost it. And, and winning, winning titles is great resume, but it doesn't really make you any money. Right. I had talked to this the other day. Someone asked me about, I did an interview with something. They said, what do you think about the Mr. Olympia? I said, Mr. Olympia, back in the day, no one knows who Mr. Olympia is. If you go down to the street and you tell somebody you're Mr. America, Mr. Universe, they'll say, oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. I'd say, Mr. Olympia. They said, what's that? Yeah, what's that? Mr. America, Miss America, Mr. Universe, Miss Universe were the titles that are right. top of the line. Right. Mr. Olympia came on later, or the Arnold Classic, but no one really knows what that is. And, and by the way, even now, yeah. you know, some people would argue that there are 
physiques that are very, very, very good somewhere in Germany and, you know, mm-hmm. Ireland, mm-hmm. but that are not allowed to compete in the IFBB. Right. And yet, so it's not really the ultimate decider of the, the best no, physique in the world. No, there's limitations. So in there it. are some great physiques out there that are not competing in the IFBB and so. Years ago, if you were one of Weeder's boys, and then you moved over to when Vince McMahon started his own bodybuilding thing. Right. If you went there, you were cut loose from Weeder, you couldn't go back. Right. Uh, I don't know that Jim was ever with Weeder. I mean, I don't think he ever was. No, I don't think he was. He was in the mi- magazines quite a bit, but I don't think he was ever with yeah. him. And then he got an award uh, just last year down at the beach. Muscle Beach, uh, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Uh, he came down, he had this... Uh, this was less than a year ago. Less than a year ago, he had this, he had this patchwork jacket on. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which I thought <laughs> I would love to have that. And that was the coolest looking outfit. I'll post yeah. it. That yeah. was a very cool looking outfit. It looked great on him. He wore it well. But can you imagine if somebody would have gone up to us and whispered in our ear, this person on the stage right now will be dead in less than 12 months. No. I would have never thought that. Nope, nope. It's just like Larry Colbert. Larry yeah. Colbert passed away and that was yeah. it. I mean, it's like, this is coming about a lot now at my age. A lot of my friends from bodybuilding are, are going that way. I've tried to get many on here and they're 75, 80 years old and want to talk. They don't want to talk. They don't want to be seen. Yeah. They're embarrassed how they look nowadays. Jim didn't have to be embarrassed. He looked great. No, he looked great. He looked great. Yeah. And the guy from the Eagles. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, I, I went to a concert two years ago. Yeah. And now he's dead. Yeah. So it just, you know, we, we life is so precious and we really have to live it carefully and richly as much as we can and, and, and always thinking that we never know when it's going to go. Yeah, there's no expiration date. Anyway, I wanted to tribute this and, and, and uh, honor Jim Morris because uh, he was a good friend to us. He was an amazing guy. His diet was really tight. I remember him taking raw. He was raw, vegetarian toward the end. Yeah, vegetarian toward the end, but he used to take raw liver and put it in a blender and drink it yeah. to make results. And I said, I can't imagine how he could do that. Yeah. And then we tried. How ironic is it that he went from raw liver yeah. to vegetarian? I know. <laughs> but even as a vegetarian, he lost a lot of weight, but he's still muscular. Right. So yeah. our hats go off to you, Jim. We, we hope you rest in peace. Absolutely. Um, there should be a memorial coming up, which we'll all go to. I don't know where it's going to be and when, but I definitely want to go. Yeah. We're trying to find that out right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to find that out. He is survived, by the way, by his mother, who's 100 years old, I understand, and doing well. Yeah. And a sister. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So maybe uh, since he's from the East Coast, if we don't be back there, I don't know. Maybe they never told us. I'm going to go wherever it is. Yeah, me too. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, another note, um, being a personal trainer, like he was and that you are, there's there's a company called NASM. National Academy of Sports Medicine. Right. And many of you guys out there are interested in being fitness trainers and health and fitness and involved in this kind of thing. And the group um, is recognized to anyone who wants to become the best of what they can be. The National Academy of Sports Medicine. These guys really are the best. You know, um, a long time ago, the, the most prestigious organization to be certified by was the American College of Sports Medicine. Right. And NASM didn't exist yet. Right. And ACE existed. And so what you really had was American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM, which kind of catered to... Um, doctors specializing in sports medicine. Yeah. And over here you had ACE, which was almost more directed towards aerobic instructors. Okay. Right. And then NASM came around. And I would say still to this day, NASM is the best right. trainer organization. It's true. If you want to be certified by an organization that really dots their I's and crosses their T's and teaches what you need to know to be a good trainer, they're the one. And right now they're offering my viewers, you guys out there, a 14 day free trial online at the CBT certification. Just go to myusatrainer.com slash Rick. That's my webpage. That's my landing page. Or click on the link in my description of the video and get started today. They're going to set you up with a really good deal for free for 14 days. In my can't beat that. Can't beat it. Nope. You can't beat that at all. And that's important, by the way, not only from a, a, a position of, of knowing what you're doing, but also from marketing. And ASM is a, is a prestigious certification. So if you get certified by them, it scores points. That's true. Also, World Gym is my sponsors, and they have ambassadors, a couple of ambassadors around the United States now doing training videos. Every week they do a, every week they do a body part. I have a li- link on here. I want you to click on it. It addresses you to the trainers, who they are, who their ambassadors are. And every week I will place uh, another link on to what body part they're working on. I think abs is coming up, chest is coming up. But World Gym is sponsoring that. Great guys. Uh, the company that's is gone, it's going really far. The owners are awesome people. And uh, They I, took over from Joe Gold. Yeah, they took over from Joe Gold. They, they, they're just a great group of people that own World Gym now. So click on that link and have a look at it. It's really fun to see what's going on. And with that, that's it. Hey, Joe Gold was, uh, he was an eccentric gym owner, wasn't he? Very much. I like Vince uh, Gerondo. I remember uh, I went to the World Gym when it was upstairs on Main Street. Yes. And there was no music. No. Nope. No music allowed. And I remember somebody let down the leg press machine a little too hard 
And across the room, Joe goes, you fucking moron. Yeah. It's like, okay. This is why a lot of people want to wear gold because the gold is playing music. And, yeah, and, and he wouldn't get yelled at for dropping yeah, weights. I mean, a lot of people wear their own headsets, but music is inspiring to train. You know, when you're training at Joe's and you had no music, yeah. it's like a... It was like, it a, was like a church. It was very yeah. quiet. It was like a morgue in there. Very quiet, uh, yeah. That was just his little idiosyncrasy, but I, I don't yeah. think... And I remember one time I went into the one on... Uh, there used to be the Sizzler restaurant. Yes. On Washington Boulevard. And I walked in there and I said, uh, can I get some membership information, please? He goes, just look around. That's how it was. Just look around. 300 bucks. I know. <laughs> you know... Um, <laughs> Everybody knows, and you know, that I did the logo for Gold's Gym. Right. Well, I, I just had, I forgot, this was sitting here. I offer this now on my website. It's a it's a drawing of the, of the guy. It's just a drawing. It doesn't say Gold's Gym on it. It has my signature and has made to whoever wants to order this. Each one is hand-drawn by itself, so there's mistakes, because I can't draw everything the same at the same time. It's impossible. And, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's a piece of history, a piece of history of bodybuilding. You can frame it, put it on the wall. You can order off my website, $75.00. And shipping, and I'll send it right out to you in a, in a frame, but you might want to change the frame. It's a good drawing. Put it up on your wall in honor. I've had so many people order these this week, and if you get, get this, and you buy it, and you bring it home, take a picture of it, and I'll show it on this show, and I'll give you recognition. Uh, of you holding the picture. Of you holding the picture. Right. I'll give you some space on Rick's Corner, and Facebook. So go to rickgrayson.com, and you'll find it there. Um, I think that's it. We're going to do another segment on something else. Along the yes, we are. But I want to close this one out and say, Jim Morris, we love you. We had a good life with you. We enjoyed every minute of your company, and we're sorry to see you go. Absolutely. But you'll always be here. Absolutely. Rest in peace. See you guys next time. Grayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.